we have previously told you about inventions and their creators that were deliberately suppressed or liquidated. But have you thought about all those brave inventors who tested their discoveries themselves and whose stories end in the most tragic ways? These tireless pioneers risked everything to push technology forward, even when it meant paying with their lives. Stay until the end, because we'll uncover the secrets of history's most daring yet fatal experiments that doomed their creators. Born on 16th October 1878 in Austria, Franz Reichelt became one of the most ambitious tailors of the past. As a young man, he moved to Paris, where he established a successful business, serving a predominantly Austrian clientele. In 1909, Reichelt became a naturalized French citizen. His passion for flying began in 1910, when aviation was still in its infancy. Inspired by the first airplanes and the potential of flight, Reichelt imagined a parachute suit that could save aviators from disaster. He began designing and testing prototypes, initially dropping dummies from the fifth floor of his apartment building. In 1911, Reichelt's dream gained momentum when the Aero Club de France announced a prize of 10,000 francs, or about 50,000 euros to date, for a practical parachute that did not exceed 55 pounds. Despite numerous failed tests and breaking his leg in one of them, Reichelt did not give up. He believes his parachute suit needs a higher platform to succeed. So he heads to the Eiffel Tower, lobbying the Paris authorities for permission to conduct his experiment from this iconic structure. After a year of persistence, Reichelt finally received permission from the Paris police prefecture to test his invention. However, the approval was given on the express condition that mannequins would be used. On February 4, 1912, the artist was given the right to use the device. Reichelt arrives at the Eiffel Tower at 7 a.m. wearing his parachute suit and accompanied by two friends. A crowd of journalists and onlookers had gathered and were waiting to see the mannequin launched. To their shock, Reichelt announced that he would make the jump himself. Despite pleas from his friends and spectators to reconsider, Reichelt climbs the tower. At 8.22 a.m., he steps onto a small table near the edge of the first platform, 187 feet above the ground. On the recording, we see how for 40 agonizing seconds, Reichelt seems to hesitate, perhaps sensing his impending doom. Finally, nevertheless, he jumps. The suit, instead of unfolding, folds around him, causing him to crash into the ground with even greater speed. Reichelt dies instantly from the impact, which leaves over a two-inch hole in the frozen ground. Everyone who attended was horrified. The press documented every detail, from the police measuring the depth of the crater to the public reaction. After this unfortunate incident, some referred to Reichelt as a brave inventor, while others criticized his recklessness. More than once, the haste of inventors to show their creations to the world in order to witness their discovery has cost not only their own lives, but that of others. Such was the case with Horace Lawson Hunley, born in 1823 in Sumner County, Tennessee. Horace grew up in a time of rapid technological advancement and societal upheaval. When he moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, he established himself as a lawyer and politician, serving in the state legislature. The onset of the U.S. Civil War in 1861 set the stage for his most significant contribution to naval engineering. New Orleans, a bustling and strategically important city, provided the ideal backdrop for Hunley's pioneering efforts in submarine design. In response to the Union blockade that was strangling the Confederacy, Hunley collaborated with James R. McClintock and Baxter Watson to build the Confederacy's first submarine called the Pioneer. Despite an initial commitment to meet a deadline, shortly before completion, the submarine had to be dismantled to avoid capture when New Orleans fell to Union forces in 1862. Undeterred, the trio moved to Mobile, Alabama, where they constructed the American submarine anew. This second attempt also ended in failure. When launched, she sank during trials. Financially strapped and under increasing pressure, Hunley only strengthened his resolve to see his idea through. Left without funding, he invested his personal finances and led the development of a third submarine, which would bear his name, H. L. Hunley. In fact, the submarine turns out to be a marvel of ingenuity. It was manually propelled by an eight-man crew and was designed to dive and resurface, which was groundbreaking for the time. 
Again comes the time for a demonstration, which takes place in Mobile Bay. The submarine successfully sinks a barge, convincing Confederate leaders of its potential. Work on the vessel then continued unabated. But on October 15, 1863, tragedy struck during a routine test in Charleston Harbor. Hunley, eager to prove the vessel's reliability, personally assumed command. The submarine sank and never surfaced. This ill-fated test results in the drowning of Hunley and his entire crew. Despite Hunley's death, the Confederacy was now convinced of the submarine's potential. It was located, retrieved, and prepared for a new mission. On February 17, 1864, with a new crew led by Lieutenant George E. Dixon, the Hunley embarked on a historic mission. The submarine successfully attacked and submerged the USS Housatonic, marking the first time in history that a submarine submerged an enemy warship. However, the Hunley fails to return to port and disappears with the entire crew. The mysterious fate of H.L. Hunley puzzled people for more than a century until it was discovered in 1995 and brought to the surface in 2000. The study of the vessel and its crew provides invaluable insights into Civil War era technology and the bravery of those who operated the submarine. Today, the H.L. Hunley is preserved and displayed in Charleston, South Carolina as a testament to the ingenuity and sacrifice of its creator and crew. In the early 20th century, another visionary engineer, Thomas Andrews, embarked on a similarly ambitious project. As chief designer of the Titanic, Andrews aimed to build the largest and most luxurious ocean liner ever built. While the Titanic represented the pinnacle of naval engineering, it also had a tragic end. Thomas Andrews Jr. was born on February 7, 1873, in Comber, Northern Ireland, into a prominent family. His uncle, Lord Pirrie, was a key figure in the Belfast-based Harland & Wolfe Shipbuilding Company. From an early age, Andrews showed a keen interest in engineering and ship design. At the age of 16, he began an apprenticeship with his uncle's company, where he rose to managing director and chief designer, a position that would one day lead him to his most significant project, the Royal Mail Ship Titanic. As his career progressed, Andrews was involved in the design and construction of several notable ships. His innovative ideas and commitment to safety and luxury made him a respected figure in the shipbuilding industry. Despite his position and the prestige of his name, many conflicts arose in the conception of the Titanic. The project aimed to create the largest and most luxurious ocean liner of its time. Andrews faced numerous challenges, including design complexities and safety issues. Although he pushed to have more lifeboats, his recommendations were rejected in order to maintain the ship's aesthetic appeal. On 10 April 1912, the Titanic departed on her maiden voyage from Southampton. Andrews was on board as part of the Guarantee Group, tasked with monitoring the ship's performance and making necessary adjustments. But he would never be able to make those adjustments because on the night of April 14th, the Titanic was wrecked. Andrews quickly assesses the damage and realizes that the ship is doomed. He informs Captain Smith that the Titanic will sink in a few hours, setting off a dramatic effort to save as many lives as possible. After the collision, Andrews devoted himself to helping passengers get to the lifeboats, urging them to put on life jackets and prepare for evacuation. Despite his efforts, lifeboats are not enough for everyone. Andrews assists to the very end, prioritizing the safety of others over his own. Witnesses see him for the last time in the first-class smoking room, where he calmly accepts his fate as the ship continues to sink. This tragic disaster culminates in the sinking of the Titanic in the icy waters of the North Atlantic, resulting in the deaths of over 1,500 people, including Thomas Andrews. You may have noticed that we said wrecked, not collided with an iceberg. Why did we do this? You can best understand by watching our video, Greatest Historical Events That Did Not Happen The Way You Think. Click the video on the screen now, and in a second, we will be together again.